Hello everyone, I'm Santiago Santiago and today I'm going to be doing a very quick tutorial to teach you how to overclock your NVIDIA GPU. This time around I'll be using a GTX 1050 Ti but this works on GTX 1060, GT 1030, whatever. Even on 750 Ti or 1080 Ti, I did it on all those GPUs just fine. So in this one I'm using MSI Afterburner as my tool for the overclocking. But there are many tools out there that allow you to do the exact same thing. They have the same options, most of them. So first of all, I'll just change the skin because I don't like the skin of the program right now. I usually use the default B3 skin. There you go. And well, I'm zooming in. First of all, disclaimer, whatever you do to your GPU using this program is under your full responsibility. So with that out of the way, let's just start overclocking. First of all, we have the core clock and memory clock. So these are the two most important values that you can tweak. Since I'm a little unpa since I'm a little impatient with this, with overclocking, I just add in 50 megahertz each time, but you can do intervals of 25. So well, we start with 50 and we launch our benchmark after applying this. But before starting the benchmark, something very, very important. This option right here, never enable this. This means that each time the computer starts, this program will put your overclock automatically. It will activate it. But if your overclock is unstable and you have this checked, each time you launch your PC, it will crash. So <laughs> make sure that this is just unchecked. So if an overclock fails or something like that, you just restart the PC and you get the stock settings. Nothing overclock over there. So yeah. I start with 50 MHz on the core clock. I launch my benchmark, which I like to use is called superposition. And I usually just put 1080p extreme or 1080p high, and I just run it. That means that it will just run the benchmark and this should test how our GPU is doing. If it crashes or you see any artifacts, artifacts are some, for example, shadows flickering or whatever, any graphical problems, that, sh that means that your overclock is not stable. It has some problems there. You have to lower the settings there. But as you can see, it looks just fine. Yeah, we're getting 10 frames per second, but that's not the point. The point is that we are stressing the GPU at its max. As you can see, utilization there is at 100%. And you can see also the temperatures, your graphics, which is the core clock, and the memory, which is the memory clock. So if this finishes fine, you shouldn't have a problem but it's not perfect. And when I finish this, as I said, I'm impatient. I just put 100, I go 50, 50, 50 until it crashes. So we apply and once we apply that, we try it again and we get another run and another run and another run. So once you finish this and it crashes or something like that, go to the last stable value. So this one is 100 megahertz to the core clock. This one should work as well because I already ran a couple tests with this. This doesn't mean it's perfect. As you can see now, I it runs just fine. No graphical problems, but you have to let it go till the end. So you know it's stable or not. It will give you an average, um, a minimum, a maximum, and, a, and just um, some scores, and that's it. So well, I'm skipping this because I already did it. Okay, so it's fine. But for example, imagine I go to 150, it's fine. And then I go to 200 and it crashes. Okay, so 150 was stable, 200 it crashes. Let's go to the last stable value, 150. And there you can start trying, for example, 165 to see if that crashes or not. Personally, at 160 it already crashes, at least on my end. So I keep it at 150. But what I told you here, you have to do the same with the memory clock then. Once the core clock numbers are stable, you can start just cranking up the memory clock. And it's the same procedure. You keep this at uh, the last stable value, the core clock. And then you start just playing with the memory clock. You add 50, 50, 50 till it crashes. Personally, what I got to was 650. So this is my stable overclock. And yeah, guys, that's it. Just to sum up, what you have to do, you go higher and higher, you run the full benchmark to see if you have a problem or not, if it crashes, if you get any graphical problems. And once you get to your maximum overclock, which is different on all GPUs, 
if you have the same 1050 Ti as I do, you might have different numbers. So don't try my numbers directly, that makes no sense. You won't be able to know what is unstable and what's stable. So I recommend going by intervals of 50, and if that's too much, do 25. You, you'll see what you do. But the procedure is that, it's very, very simple, as you can see. You just run this, but it's not perfect. You might get crashes on some games, some games might not crash. Once you have a stable overclock with this benchmark, start trying your favorite games. For example, in my case, Hitman, Witcher 3 and Final Fantasy 15 usually crash when I'm compared to this. So I had to lower the overclock because 165 was stable on superposition, but on Final Fantasy 15 it crashes. So you have to try some games after you're done with the overclock. Um, if it crashes with your major values here on, the, on a game, just try lowering it by just 10 MHz until it's stable, and that should be it. Uh, well, if you want to save your settings, for example, this is your stable overclock, it works with the benchmark, with games, you just click save and press on one of these. So I put one, and as you can see then, if you just reset the overclock, just, I don't know, turn off the PC, the next time you launch this program, you just click here, profile one, press apply, and you have your overclock there. So it's very quick to go back to. But yeah guys, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.